I said uh, I said to Ricky, I said I said this earlier as well. I said I feel like we've seen this movie before. Fight Week. We had the Mexico City, we had Las Vegas. We're here now in Louisville. Are you excited to just get this one over with and and you know, once that cage door shuts, go at it. Yeah, I'm excited to get this one over with. Uh especially uh I'm excited to get back in there most more than anything, you know. So for the people that don't know, are you able to tell us what happened in Mexico City? Uh, so I got sick the day of, and uh, I tried to shake it off. I tried uh, my best uh, to do a training session, maybe break a sweat, shake it off. I couldn't um, try to get to the arena, try to shake it off again, and uh, I couldn't uh, talk to the UFC. They helped me a little bit, and I couldn't. Um, so that's why it took till last minute before I walked out for them to say that I wasn't walking out. Uh, I w- it was already going on before, but uh, we were really trying. So like they took to last minute to say that I wasn't walking out. Was it like a was it like a food poisoning or did you ever figure out what it was? Not uh, well. My team was sick, uh, and then I I, I I got it the day of the fight. Um, because I ate healthy, I had a good weight cut, I had everything, and uh, I was feeling, the day of the fight, I was feeling dizzy, I was feeling lightheaded, I was uh, having cough, because I already had a cough during the whole week, but it wasn't that deep, you know, um, but the day of, it just got got really bad. And then, was it actually scheduled to be at the Apex the week after? It got announced, but nothing was signed or nothing, and uh, I wasn't going to be able to make it. I had a really important things to do, after the fight, and um, even if the fight would have happened, though, I, d- I was still feeling sick the next Saturday because I got sick on Saturday, so that's a- it-, it wasn't like I got sick on Saturday and it went away Sunday. Like, I was sick on Saturday, and I got better till the next Sunday. Uh, even my cousins that came to see me uh, after the fight at the room, uh, they got sick, too, so uh, it was something that was growing around my team. What do you think of Ricky Tercios as an opponent? Because he was in here earlier. He said, you know what? The past is the past. I've moved on. I'm ready to get in there and, and you know, give everything I got this weekend. He's a guy, he's never been submitted in his UFC career. You're a guy that's, you know, well-known for his grappling. So how do you think that pans out against him this weekend? I mean, there's always a first time, right? And uh, he's been knocked out. So, uh, you know, that's there too. Uh, I'm ready to go out there and finish him. Uh, you know, he's, he it, it's a little weird. He comes and tells me it's all respect, but uh, he went online and uh, after the fight and he said that he made it out clean and uh, whatever, whatever he says. Uh, so, you know, if uh, she really feels the way he feels, we'll see if he does something about it Saturday night. You know, I expect the same energy and for him to do something about it, I'll be right there. Um, yeah, I think there's a lot of ways for me to finish this fight, so I'm going to go out there and... and, and finish him and get the job done whether it's round one round two or round three that's interesting you say that because like I said he said he's moved on but you just brought up the post that he made and he he said something along along the lines of you know I'm I'm one and oh and Raul disrespected the Bushido code by not coming out and fighting me that night so is there a little bit of beef on your side like hey you know what we're not good yeah, I mean, if I really disrespected whatever code he, he's talking about, we'll see if he does something about it Saturday night, you know. We'll see if if how much I disrespected it, you know. Show me on Saturday, you know. Do something about it. Um, yeah, uh, what else was I going to say? I forgot, but, uh, oh, yeah, I took that a little personal because uh, I did my work, you know. Uh, I know he. I know he did his work as well, but I did mine. I, I did mine too. Uh, he called me unprofessional, but I did my camp. I was in in in, in a mountain on since January the first week, with just my team, nobody around. Three thousand two hundred meters above sea level, so even more than the city. Um, I did my weight cut. It was uh, a good weight cut, and you know, uh, I did everything I could. Controlling my hands is what I'm trying to say. Uh, getting sick, I can't control that. You know, that's something I couldn't control. Um, so yeah, this is that 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 made that made me take it a little bit personal. You know, so I just want him to keep that same energy and and try to do something about it. And he says that um, 
he's proud that he's uh, almost on the co-main event, but he better remember that he's there because of me. What do you think about all these guys calling you out now? Because we had talked before and you said, listen, I've kind of, you know, a lot of people are calling me out, but I've, I've kind of got to see what it's like on the other side because I'm bringing a lot of eyes to the fight and I don't know if they're going to bring as many eyes as I am to the fight. So when it comes to your career and moving forward, how does it look like for you, like when opponents are presented to you? Yeah, a lot of guys are calling me out, but, um, you know, I don't really know who they are. Uh, it has to make sense for me if they're going to call me out. They have to have a hype around them too. Uh, because if I was them, I get it. I would call myself out too because – uh, with me, they get a lot of attention. Like you see, Rick is going to get a lot of attention uh, because we're one before the co-main. Um, we're above a, a lot of guys on the card. So uh, fighting me, you get a lot of attention. But what do I get from fighting other fighters? Like Ricky, he brings a little bit. Like he's the ultimate fighter champion, so he has a little bit of name. This is the type of fights that I want. Uh, I need somebody with hype as well. Uh, with a big name or, or something, you know, like uh, me, they, they see that I have hype, I have a big name, uh, but I want to get something, like if I beat them, what do I get, you know? Your brothers, I know I know we're going to see them in the UFC eventually. Um, which one do you think we're going to see first? Uh, first, I think we're going to see my brother Jesse Rosas, and then... Uh, my brother Kevin Ross is coming up too, so it's going to be three brothers in the UFC. There's been two, but I don't think there's been three, so it's going to be a really amazing journey, a really amazing career for us, for our legacy, and right now, we all go out there and win our fights, keep winning, and my turn is Saturday night, you know, so I got Ricky Terzis, and I'm going to go out there and finish him. And then as far as, I mean, you're still only 19 years old, right? It, it, it seems like we're watching you grow up with the sport how much better have you gotten since that ufc debut and, and the contender series because we've seen you you know grappling with guys like the bellator champion patchy mix um we've seen you you know with sean o'malley and and big name guys out there so how much better have you gotten since your debut i've gotten much better uh especially every fight i come in more experience and bigger in size you know so from this fight like this fight, I'm bigger in size. I'm more knowledgeable. I have much more techniques. Uh, and I train with, like, the best in the world. Uh, Moral Dolly's Billy, Patchy Mix. Um, I went to the MMA lab, trained with Mario Bautista, Marcus McGee, uh, Tyler Phillips. So I've trained with uh, a lot of guys in my weight class at the highest level. And I, I'm able to get those rounds as experience as well um, and keep learning for myself. And, uh, I'm excited, you know, because now I'm much more experienced. Is there any point in your career do you think that you will take time off? Because, I mean, possibly moving up a weight division as you grow, maybe bulking. Is there any period of time where you're going to be like, man, I'm just going to take, you know, a year to kind of develop and, you know, hone in my skills and, and possibly change divisions? Uh, not really. I mean, uh, I'm always going to be active. I think I'll rest at the end uh, when I retire. Right now, I want to be active. Uh, this is my life. This is my career. This is the only thing that I do. So, you know, I like going out there and fighting. Uh, so I want to be able to fight this fight and two more times this year and just keep, keep myself active. And as far as the division goes, you see yourself in this division for a long time? Uh, yeah, I see myself as long as possible in this division, but I know eventually moving up to 45 will come, but I really want to focus on 35 right now uh, as much as I can. The day that I miss weight, I know it's going to be time for me to move up to 145. Last question, how do you get your hand raised on Saturday night? I get the finish. Awesome. Raul, uh, everything goes well. Uh, call out for the sphere, is that the plan? Yeah, that's the plan. Uh, but going back to what I said, uh, I want it, it, it's a big event on the sphere, so I want a big name as well. Gotcha. Um, this guy, Ricky Tercios, you talked about him and him having a little bit of name value for this fight. Um, do you also view him as, as, a, as a step up, though, um, as a fighter, not just the name value it, itself? 
Yeah, I guess with the fighters that I fought, it's a little bit of a step up, but uh, I'm ready for it. I mean, I don't think he's better than Christian Rodriguez, you know, but obviously I didn't win that fight, so uh, we're back on it, and I'm going to win this fight.